Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, now we have His Excellency Governor General of the Islands, Sir Dr. Panikok Abdul Abui, to deliver his speech to the nation, an announcement of which birthday honors and awards for 2019. Speaker of Parliament and Madame Poti, the Chief Justice, Sir Albert Palmer and Lady Palmer, the Honorable Prime Minister and uh, Madame Sobhavari, members of Cabinet, members of Parliament, members of the Diploma Diplomatic Forum, Church leaders, the mayor of Boreara City, the leaders and the people of Guadalcanal, the leaders and the people of the provinces, the people of Boreara City, everyone from Solomon Islands, ladies and uh, gentlemen. Today is my last celebration of Queen's birthday. I have now been in office for 10 years, since 2009. I, was, I wish to thank you, the people of Solomon Islands, for your support and prayers for me and my family. I also thank the government, both past and present, for support in providing continuing service through the public service to Government House. I also thank all the staff of Government House for their service. I want to, I want to thank the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force for their unfailing support to me and my family. The same goes to former Prime Ministers and Cabinet during my term in office. I want to thank all the government ministries and their staff for giving support to Government House in the usual manner. I do not forget the churches for their prayers. I thank them. I thank my family also for supporting me if we have made mistakes, please forgive us. My last and big thank you goes to my wife, Grace, who has stood by me through thick and thin during my term in office. I do not forget the members of parliament in 2009 for electing me as Governor General once and in 2014 for re-electing me, enabling me to serve two terms in office. I thank them for having confidence in me. I wish my successor the best and God's blessing. I will now move on to an issue of current concern to the world at large. I am always interested in knowing more about climate change. I have read about it in relevant literature, saw it discussed on television channels, and visited relevant websites. What I am saying today is based on these information sources. I am therefore not the original author of the information. My intention is to share this information with you for general awareness for, of what is going on regarding the climate change debate. We take a lot of things for granted in this country. I have discovered that there are two conversations going on in this regard. For those who are already aware of this fact, 
please bear with me. For those who are still not well informed, this will be of interest. I am sure all of us do know about the climate change issue because we already do know about it from other sources of information, see it and its effects in Solomon Islands. I do not need to tell you about the details of its destructive effects on communities everywhere in the world. Storms, hurricanes, cyclones, typhoons, flooding, forest fires, and the rise of sea level are well known. They occur frequently with increasing <coughs> levels of intensity. These events are causing great concern to the world. I mean to the people of the world at large, including us in Solomon Islands. The world is therefore concerned about climate change. There is a great debate going on about it and what can be done to control it. The, science, the scientists have been speaking about it. They are warning the world that the planet is warming up too much and too quickly. They put the blame on carbon dioxide emission from factories, fires, and anything that pollutes the atmosphere. If nothing is done, the world will be doomed. We must save the environment now. In 2017, the Paris Climate Change Agreement was signed by many countries. This agreement had the blessing of the United Nations. President Trump, however, refused to support it on behalf of the United States of America. The Global, Warm the Global Warming Report, issued by the International Panel on Climate Change, in short, IPCC, in, two in 2018, reaffirms the concern that if the world does nothing or less, there will be irreparable consequences to the planet. It is said that this report has got the support of 1,000 scientists. That is a lot of human brains combined in the report. It is obviously weighty in significance. The key message in the IPCC report is, I quote, cut carbon pollution as much as possible, as fast as possible, unquote. This is from the IPCC website. This is 97% this is 97 consensus on climate change, according to the reporters. There is now a Green New Deal strategy being promoted by the Democratic Party in the United States to urge government to spend more money on climate change, to bring carbon dioxide emission down to zero level. A young Swedish girl named Greta Thunsberg has also taken upon herself on behalf of all young people to call for the world to do more and quickly to reduce carbon dioxide emission. This is a CNN re re interview. In, respect, in this respect, a sunrise movement is also being promoted for the same purpose by young people to positively tackle climate change. Also CNN, CNN News. Is there anything or condition that man must observe in order to escape the threat of climate change? It is, it is said that, that God is loving why does God allow punishment on his children? There is a split in the church 
on this issue. The churches that are in agreement with the extreme left are in support of the majority of scientists. The extreme right, on the other hand, the, the evangelicals are not in agreement. In fact, the chief editor of the Trumpet magazine, Gerald Flurry, a religious writer, published in August 2017 an editorial titled, and I quote, What the Paris Agreement Was About, unquote. In this editorial, he basically, among other, th other things, said that the scientific, scientific position taken by the majority of scientists was incorrect. In other words, it is not true that the primary cause of climate change is carbon dioxide emission. Rather, it is based on the extreme left socialist ideology seeking to control the world, driven by Satan the devil. This is a shock to me. I have not heard it before. Another religious writer, Andrew Miller, published another article in the same magazine titled Apocalypse, do carbon dioxide emission threaten all life on Earth? Unquote. He argues that the, warming up of, that the warming up of the planet is not a new thing. In fact, he says, it is a natural cycle whereby the planet has experienced cold and warm periods at intervals throughout the centuries. He first says that the planet had warmed up at intervals even before the, even before the industrial, industrial revolution began in Europe. He says the current warming up of the planet that the scientists are talking about is just one of the warm periods in the natural cycle the planet has been experiencing from time immemorial. He does not, however, discount the effect of carbon dioxide but such is negligible, for the sun alone causes the warming up of the planet. Again, again, this is a shock to me. I've never heard it before. So, my question is, who is right? There must be a correct view on climate change. The two religious writers referred to above are of the view that the Holy Bible has got a lot to say about the weather and how it affects us. They point to Holy Scriptures. They say God, God controls the weather and he uses it to punish us for our transgressions. However, they say God does punish with love in that he always warns us of impending destruction before it happens. They say man must repent and turn to God to avoid punishment for his transgressions. Their message is turn to God and repent. They say do not blame carbon dioxide emission for climate change. They say, you and I do not control the weather. God does. Look to him for the escape route. They point to the following scriptures to support their position. They cite the book of Nahum in the Bible. Chapter 1, verse 3, it says, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power. The Lord will not leave the guilty unpunished. His way is in the whirlwind and the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet." Unquote. They go on. In the book of Job, chapter 12, verse 15, it says, If he holds by the waters, there is drought. 
if he lets them loose, they devastate the land, unquote. Again, in the book of Job, they say, chapter 17, verses 11 to 13, it says, again, God's voice thunders in marvelous ways. He does great things beyond our understanding. He says to the snow, fall on the earth, and to the rain, shower, be a mighty downpour. Unquote. The tempest comes out from, it, from its chambers, the cold from the driving winds. The breath of God produces ice, and the broad waters become frozen. He loads the clouds with moisture, he scatters his lightning through them. At his direction they swirl around over the face of the whole world to do whatever he commands them. He brings the clouds to punish men or to water his earth and show his love." Unquote. Lastly, he goes on. In the book of Amos, chapter 4, verse 7, it says, I also withheld rain from you when the harvest was still three months away. I sent rain on one town, but withheld it from another. One field had rain, another had none, and dried up. People staggered from town to town for water, but did not get enough water to drink. Yet, you have not returned to me." Unquote. God's control over, over the weather has been recorded in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, where Jesus rebuked the wind and, and sea, and they obeyed him. The fact that God controls the weather is mentioned in the Bible more than 40 times. The action taken by President Trump shocked the world. It is said that Pres President Trump did not believe in climate change being an environmental threat. The former Secretary of State John Kerry said that the horror of President Trump's action was that terrible storms would occur due to climate change. The former President Barack Obama agreed. One reporter in the Guardian newspaper said, and I quote, Trump's disbelief won't stop dangerous climate change, unquote. The Paris Agreement on Climate Change, however, is not there, despite the absence of the United States. The Secretary General of the United Nations have recently spoken very strongly for the need to support the, the agreement in its implementation. The United States and one or two countries still have not supported the call by the United Nations Secretary General for action on climate change. The United States regards the Paris Climate Change Agreement as a conspiracy, the extreme left, to weaken its economy and thus its strength. President Trump belongs to the Republican Party. It is said that the Republican Party is heavily influenced by the conservatives, being the evangelicals. evangelicals. The De Democratic Party, on the other hand, are influenced by the socialists and the communists. This is the politics of the issue in the United States, or at least it is, it is, said, to, it is said to be. It is, it is said that the peoples under the, it is said that the peoples of America and of Britain are the descendants of Manasa and Ephraim, of Ed of and Ephraim, the sons of Joseph. These two lines go back to Abraham. They are, among others, Israelites. The promises, promises, and the curses in the Bible, therefore, follow them. This is the biblical connection. For me, it makes sense. The future of America and Britain will be what the Bible says. 
It is difficult to talk about America and Britain without mentioning the Bible, for they are rooted in Bible stories. In other words, they have deep roots in the Bible. The two conversations I mentioned today began in the, in the United States of America. The Democratic Party and the Repu Republican Party are at odds with each other. They hold opposing views on climate change. It can be said that underpinning these opposing views is a type of war between good and evil. It is also said that not all scientists are of the same view on climate change. In other words, carbon dioxide emission is not the primary cause of climate change, so scientists say, so scientists saying this are in the minority. As I have said, the question therefore is, what, what then is the truth of climate change? This is an important question. We need to know the answer. This is why I want to talk about it today. We are all for something good. Negative views can be stressful and can produce anxiety and fear in our minds about the future. But knowing the truth is fundamental in making correct decisions. The biblical view is not talked about much in the media at all. Mention of it is always couched in, in terms such as being conservative or being ext extreme right. The nearest mention of it is the use of the term evangelos. Regardless of the conflicting views held by the Republican Party, and the Democratic Party in America, the final truth must be established. I only, the, the, the only biblical view I recall from my Sunday school days is in the book of Genesis 9, where God promised never again would the earth be flooded like it had been in the days of Noah. It is, it is an everlasting covenant the rainbow is a sign of this covenant. This was God speaking. It is therefore true. Isaiah 54 verse 9 reaffirms this covenant that the waters will never again cover the earth. With due respect to, to the world top class scientists on climate change, I see no mention of carbon dioxide emission in, in the Holy Bible being the cause of storms, flooding, melting ice, drought, and so on. What we learn is that God created the heavens and the earth. We learn that He controls the weather and uses it to punish His people for disobedience. Should we believe what the Holy Bible says about the weather and its behavior? I can only say that God's word is the truth. This is affirmed in John 17, verse 17. This is reaffirmed in the book of Isaiah, verse 45. Uh, verse 9, and it says, and I quote, I, the Lord, speak the truth. I declare what is right. Unquote. God's word stands forever. In other words, God will not revoke his word. God decides what is right and what is wrong. He has not delegated that to human beings to decide what is right and what is wrong. God declares his absolute power in the book of Isaiah 46, verses 8 to 10. And I quote, I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please, unquote. Again, Isaiah 55 verse 11, it says, So my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it, unquote. The final question is, who should we believe? Man or God our Creator? who created the heavens and the earth. 
I will leave the debate open for each individual to decide which side he or she accepts. Lastly, it is now my pleasure to tell you of the 2019 Birth Birthday Honours and Awards duly approved by Her Majesty the Queen on the recommendation of the Honours and Awards Committee in Solomon Islands and endorsed by the Prime Minister. Companion of the Order of St. Michael and St. George, CMG, the Honourable Justice Edwin Peter Goldsberg, for service to the judiciary. Order of the British Empire, OBE, Miss Ruth Lilobula, for service to public service and community development. Edmund Edward Wickham, for service to commerce and community development. <laughs> Members of the British Empire, MBE, Hari Ali Gabutu, for service to rural and community development. Barnabas Paisodua, for service to rural and community development. <laughs> David Sheeman, for service in the Correctional Service in Solomon Islands. <laughs> Mane Ubali, for service to the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force. <laughs> British Empire Medal, PEN, Michael Arisia, for service to rural and community development. <laughs> James Banigalea, for service to vocational training and community development. Mrs. Sura, for service to rural and community development. <laughs> Miss Jenny Tegu Winnie, for service to sport in the field of weightlifting. <laughs> Queen's Police Medal, QPM, Solomon Andrew Walla for service brought to the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force. God save the Queen, God save Solomon Islands. Thank you.